Good morning, this is El Paisano News. My name is Sabrina Torres, and I'm with... I'm Rodolfo Antonio Juarez Pinedo. We have a lot of news to cover today, and first we're going to go ahead and cover the scene of the railroad construction with Ignacio. Ignacio, what's going on on the scene? This is Ignacio Cervantes reporting for El Paisano News. When we think about California, we think about the most beautiful weather, we think about the most diverse people, but do we think about the most dangerous railroad tracks? That's what the California Public Utilities Commission deemed this Santa Fe Springs Railroad Crossing on Marquardt and Rosecrans. While on site and within a span of 40 minutes, we witnessed three separate trains pass the intersection at high speed just yards away. To create a safer environment and enhance transit routes, the construction of an elevated overpass will make way for the current dangerous connection. The most dangerous railroad crossing in California is traversed by 110 freight and passenger trains and more than 52,000 vehicles daily. The California High Speed Rail Authority and the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority have teamed up to jointly fund the project. Chief Executive of the California High Speed Rail Authority told Progressive Railroad Magazine that the investment will heavily accommodate a future high speed rail service in Southern California. This $155 million project is slated to start construction in 2021 with expected completion in 2023. Signing off for El Paisano, Ignacio Cervantes. Sounds like those railroad workers are on the right track. Thank you for covering that story, Ignacio. And now we're going to head over to Anthony and Autumn who are at the Pride event here on campus. Thanks guys, I'm here at Rio Hondo's Pride event. The ASRHC Cultural Diversity Club held Rio Hondo College's very own Pride event this past week. The event was a way to learn more about LGBTQ issues, advocacy work, and how to be an ally to the LGBTQ community. Hey guys, I'm here with Neil from Vienna Star. I just want to know what, what do you guys do with Vienna Star for people of color and the LGBTQ? Well, we bring a lot of information forward. Uh, uh, we have also support groups that deal with uh, people that are living with HIV, people that uh, are thinking of a daughter transition. We also have a strong representation in the transgender community. And uh, we do fundraisers. And, uh, but basically, we try just to be uh, out there in the community of color. Hey guys, I'm here with Marcy Serrano, Chair of Sustainability at Rio Hondo College. I just want to know, Marcy, what part do you play in this event today? Um, well, I'm going to be Chair of Sustainability and our task force collaborated with Ashley Dean, who's Chair of Culture Diversity, and together we put together a little part of it. We just want to put it out there that we support LGBT community yeah. Hey guys, I'm here with Heavenly. I just want to know what brought you to this event today. Um, I'm a very big supporter of it just because my brother is um, pansexual and I am as well um, bisexual. And I think it's really good that we're here as a community, you know, because there's a lot of problems going on with, you know, LGBT. Thanks, guys. Signing off for El Paisano. I'm Anthony Moreno. See you later. Thank you, Anthony and Autumn. Events like these are very important to cover on campus. In other news, we have an increase of gas prices going on here in Southern California. Here to cover the story is Olivia. Olivia, what's going on? Gas prices have been increased lately, and with vacation season coming around, it could put a damper on people's plans. In the past few weeks, many people have seen the price of gas increase and reach well over $3. The prices we have been seeing for the last few weeks have been the highest since 2014. While some gas prices are cheaper than others, it is only by a couple ten cents at most. Local Shell and 76 gas stations remain higher than Arco and Costco. Some are saying President Trump's outage in the Iran nuclear deal is a correlation as to why the gas prices have been increasing lately. May 12th, Trump announced to kill the deal. Sociology instructor at Rio Hondo College, Brian Brutlag, shared his thoughts on the matter. If we do see a short-term um, change or shift in gas prices, uh, that will be more likely due to a reaction to the way in which this deal has been sort of laid out or presented rather than for us to know exactly what the deal, the removal of the deal will actually do. Gas prices are reaching a high people have not seen in years, but experts at the Oil Price Information Service claims once the price hit its peak, it can only go down from there, which is promising news to all. This is Olivia Venegas with the Paisano News. Thank you for that story, Olivia. I guess I'm going to have to sell my car and buy a horse, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to go over to entertainment with Michael Craven. Thanks, Sabrina. 
Last week, the Rio Hondo Dance Program hosted an evening of dance, a repertory concert. Let's go to Jose Almada with the report. The Rio Hondo College Dance Program hosted its evening of dance, a repertory concert event inside of the Ray Theater, with dance works that were based on the concept of repertory and works inspired by choreographers such as Martha Graham, Lester Horton, and Jose Limon. The event was a great way to get people to, to come from all over and just, just enjoy the music and the dancing and, and also enjoy the different styles that all the performers had to offer the entire audience. Various types of dancing, music, choreography and amazing performances that were put on. So how long have you been dancing here? Uh, this is my first semester um, dancing again at Rio Honda. Uh, what do you like the most about dancing? Um, I just. Honestly, I like the way that you can like bring people together through dancing. It's like you get to link music and just like emotions and feelings and you get to show that to people and you know, you can really inspire people through this. I really hope to join the collective next semester, which is um, the dance group here on campus and they're all really amazing people. They're <laughs> They're very talented, so I'm hoping to join that. And that's it for today. I'm Jose Omada. Thank you, Jose. Let's go over to Olivia Venegas with more from the Santa Fe Springs Art Show. I'm here at the Santa Fe Springs Art Festival located at the Clark Estate where we have tons of food, music, dancing, and a whole lot of art. Friday night brought out hundreds of guests to the Santa Fe Springs Art Fest located at the Clark Estate. The evening brought art out of its range through short films, artwork that some were able to take home, live performances, interactive art, and plenty of food and drinks. Lisa Morano, Vice President of Asheville Media in Las Vegas, and a multimedia artist, was a featured artist this year and showcased not only her 2D paintings, but her 3D as well. Morano brought her her Friday the 13th mask replicas, a clay sculpted dragon head, and props from her work at Cirque du Soleil. Among the crowd that attended was Congresswoman Linda T. Sanchez. How beautiful the setup is and um, the quality of the artwork is just amazing. The night had a lot to offer to those that attended, that were artists or not. People had their chance at being an artist with wine and paint sessions. They were able to interact with art and try painting themselves. The kinds of elements of the arts that were showcased were certainly a sight to stop and stare at. So many were blown away by the chalk art that was created before their eyes. The event was covered in booths where there was art jewelry vendors to see body art being painted. Each booth brought different art forms to the event. The art fest had many food trucks that supplied sweet treats to good eats. People could relax and enjoy live performances or short films or even explore the art galleries inside the house. This is Olivia Venegas with Al Paisano News. Thanks Olivia. Let's go over to Rodolfo Pinedo with some ice cream news. I'm here live at Downtown Disney where the local haunted dog is giving not only a free soup of ice cream but also to bring up awareness of the, the low population of bumblebees out here in the world. I myself got brownie a la mode. Mm. Hagen Dazs has claimed that one third of the company's flavors are dependent on honeybees. Honeybee populations have been rapidly decreasing. The United States has lost 44% of its honeybee colonies, which is why Hagen Dazs is giving away free ice cream in honor of the bees. People from all around Southern California went to the happiest place on earth, Disneyland's downtown Disney, to go ahead and get a free scoop of, of a flavor of their choosing. Customers getting their free ice cream were greeted by busy workers and also had the option to donate their money to the Exer Society who plan on planting one million acres of habitat for the bees. Haagen-Dazs ice cream was not to love about free ice cream. You know, I heard about this because of the bees and I think they're very important for this planet. Um, my favorite flavor, Rocky Grove. Nothing else to say. Um, I'm eating vanilla Swiss almond and it's really delicious and uh, a friend of mine told me that it's they're giving out free ice cream for helping the bees and uh, that's, I think it's really cool. This is Rudy Juarez Pinedo at Downtown Disney for El Paisano Media. Boy, talk about soft serve. This has been Michael Karebit with El Paisano Entertainment. Let's go back to Sabrina in the newsroom. Thank you, Michael. And next up we have Ignacio Cervantes with sports. Ignacio Cervantes coming to you from Bank of California Stadium for El Paisano Sports. New York City FC travels west to face LAFC in the first clash at Bank of the California Stadium. It's east versus west. It's Carlos Vela versus David Villa. 
where New York City and LAFC drew to 2-2 two -to -two tie. Uh, Carlos Vela looked to put LAFC ahead for good early in the second half up until Ishmael Tajir Shradi came in as a second half substitute and equalized for New York City FC to share a bit of the spoils. It was action packed, it was had everything, tackles, there was penalties, there was goals, and LAFC remains undefeated. Signing off for all Paisano Sports, Ignacio Cervantes. Thank you for the sports, Ignacio. And now for the weather with James Rain Spencer. This is James Rain Spencer with your forecast for this week. Monday we're going to start off cool at a nice 72, so remember to bring your jacket. Then Tuesday we're going to work it up to about 74 degrees. And Wednesday we're also going to be at a nice 74 degrees, so maybe you'll be able to take that jacket off. Thursday we're going to work it back down to 72, so remember to wear that cardigan. Then Friday we're going to work it up to a nice 73 degrees, so make sure to take off that shirt, head to the beach, and enjoy your Friday. This has been James Rains with El Paisano News. Thank you, James. This has been Sabrina Torres for El Paisano News. And this was Rodolfo Antonio Juarez Pinero. Don't forget to follow us on social media and study hard for finals now, you hear? Are you curious on what happens behind the entertainment scene? Maybe you have a passion for writing. Come join the Rio Hondo Journalism Program and find out what aspect of journalism you belong in. Located in room B112, you will find journalism students doing a variety of different things. From live broadcasting with the green screen, podcasts, newspaper spreads and editorials, and magazine issues, students get to express their creativity. Just ask for Professor Carrera. For more information, please visit riohondo.edu.